The year is 1998, and according to a lot of people, this was one of, if not the best years in rap history. There are so many classic and good albums that dropped that year. The East Coast was on, and the West Coast had fully emerged on the scene. At this point in the game, there was another coast rising in the rap industry, and that coast would be the South. As Andre 3000 said, at the 1995 Source Awards, the South has some Thing to say. There would be an album that released in 1998 that not only would be big for the South, but also would spark a dynasty with arguably the most successful rap label of all time. This album would be Juvenile's 400 Degrees under Cash Money Records. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this. If you guys like the content, you should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Let me know where you're tuning in from, represent where you're from, especially if you're representing New Orleans or any part of Louisiana. I got a lot of family down there, especially in the Rustin area. Comment down below your favorite songs from 400 Degrees. Most importantly, comment down below what it was like for you when this album first dropped because those are my favorite comments but without further ado let's get into the video Before we get into 400 Degrees, we have to get into what the climate was like in 1998. The East Coast had their time, and the West Coast had theirs, and the death of Biggie and Tupac cooled the tensions of both coasts with the whole East Coast versus West Coast feud that was fueled by the media. The South at this point in time wasn't like the South that we know today. The South was still emerging and being heavily criticized for their sound. People at this time were calling them country bum saying that they weren't lyrical and overall they just trashed our whole music down there record label wise in the south at this time you had labels like suave house LaFace records no limit records swisher house hypnotized minds so so deaf records and rap aloud records just to name a few but notice how i left out one huge name and that huge name would be cash money records Previous to 1998, Cash Money had already released a good amount of albums independently and they did pretty well in places like New Orleans, but all of these projects didn't have the support of a major label. Of course, you have the early, early days of Cash Money, which was UNLV, Kilo G, Lil Slim, Miss T, etc. A lot of people be forgetting Cash Money started all the way back in the early 90s. Someone who should get a lot more credit for holding down Cash Money previous to 1998 is BG. From what I know and have heard, BG was the one who was holding them down until a juvenile released 400 Degrees and blew cash money up nationally. By 1998, Juvenile was already two albums in at this point of his career, but only one album in under cash money. He would release his debut album, Being Myself, in February of 1995 under Warlock Records, and Soldier Rags would release in May of 1997 under cash money records. Juvenile's first album didn't really get much national attention and did not chart, but it did manage to do fairly well on the local scene in Louisiana. Soldier Rags would be his first album under Cash Money and would be his first time working with Cash Money's in-house producer Manny Fresh who I don't think gets the credit that he deserves. Manny was lacing Cash Money with them beats and he was producing whole albums. He definitely needs to be mentioned with the top producers especially for producing whole classic albums. But back to Juvenile though and he would join the group The Hot Boys in 1997 which consisted of Juvenile, BG, Turk, and Lil Wayne. The High Boys would have released their debut album, Get It How You Live, in October of 1997, and it would peak at number 37 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums chart. After that, BG would originally release his third studio album, It's All On You, Volume 2, in November of 1997, and the last project under cash money that year was the UNLV Greatest Hits with New Songs album. 
The first album from Cash Money in 1998 was the debut album of the Big Timers, which was comprised of Birdman and Manny Fresh. Their album, How You Love That, would have released in stores in March of 1998. The album would be re-released in September of 1998 after Cash Money signed their distribution deal with Universal Records. This cash money deal with Universal would be huge and would forever change the landscape of the rap game as we know it. Just for reference, Master P and No Limit Records had a very famous deal with Priority Records. No Limit had a 80-20 distribution deal with Priority which allowed No Limit to keep ownership of all of its masters. Eventually the deal grew to be an 85-15. Basically, Priority Records were in charge of distribution while No Limit it pretty much did everything else. Now Cash Money's deal with Universal was an unprecedented three year $30 million distribution deal that included a $2 million annual advance. Cash Money would receive 85% of its royalties and 50% of its publishing revenues and ownership of all masters. A woman by the name of Wendy Day would help No Limit and Cash Money with their deals. She's the founder of the Rap Coalition, which is a not-for-profit artist advocacy organization for rappers, producers, and DJs. DJs. It's supposed to educate, support, and protect rap artists, producers, and DJs. Once again, Wendy Day is another person who I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. She's spoken out numerous times about what went into Cash Money getting their deal with Universal. Why Master P is being brought up is for multiple reasons. At this point in time, Master P and No Limit Records were coming out of the South heavy. I have a whole video on Master P and No Limit's run in 1998 if you want to know more about that. I'll put a link in the description. In 1998, No Limit would release over 20 albums and sell nearly 15 million records that year alone. Nobody was really doing it like Master P at this point and once upon a time, he actually had a chance to buy No Limit records when they were smaller but things never worked out as we know. Shoot, even Turk has talked about him and Wayne wanting to join Cash Money at a point in time because Master P is very well known for setting his artists up with houses, cars, Rolexes, and all the other good stuff back in the day. Turk was referring to the time period after 400 degrees because Juvenile was shining and had all of these things while others did not. Even people that weren't the biggest names on No Limits roster were getting things. If people know the story about Master P, they would know that 1998 essentially was the peak of No Limit records. They never ever had a year bigger than 1998 and by multiple accounts, that's mostly in due part to Master P being venturing out and doing things outside of music. Master P would famously attempt to make it into the NBA, which I also did a video on as well. I'll put a link in the description. Wendy Day has said that while she was trying to get cash money their deal with Universal, she was pitching them as the new No Limit Records. When she first started saying this in her words, it wasn't true, but with Master P shifting his focus to other ventures leading to the decline of No Limit Records, it really opened the door for cash money to be the new it label coming from the south wendy has said that previous to the universal deal there was a deal around august of 1997 for juvenile with penalty records according to wendy they offered cash money seventy five thousand dollars just for juvenile alone Obviously, this never went through, and Juvenile ended up benefiting immensely from the Universal deal because he was the first one to release an album under that deal that wasn't a re-release as mentioned earlier with How You Love That. 400 Degrees would drop two months later after the re-release of that album. One thing that I do want to get across is that Cash Money did have success before the Universal deal, but not on a national level. They were selling thousands and even hundreds of thousands of copies of their music independently beforehand but now with the universal deal things allowed them to be heard nationally and even internationally 400 Degrees would have multiple singles, but the one that would bring a lot of attention to Juvenile before the album dropped would be the song Ha. 
This is a song that I will further break down in the second half of the video, but the song managed to peak at number 68 on the Billboard Hot 100. The album 400 Degrees would be released in November of 1998, peaking at number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100. As of today, according to the RIAA, 400 Degrees has sold over 4 million copies. An interesting thing that Juvenile mentioned on an interview with DJ Vlad was that after the Big Timers album, the initial plan was for the Hot Boys to drop an album. Universal would step in and say that they wanted Juvenile to be the next man up in which Juvenile had said that he wasn't ready. He felt like he hadn't recorded the songs that he needed to record to put an album out. He was very vocal about not being ready and wanting to take his time with it because it was a big deal for him. A first impression on the masses was huge because you never get a second first impression. As for the meaning behind the title of 400 Degrees, Juvenile would say that he bakes his chicken and fish at 400 degrees, it's just his number. The cover art for this album would also be iconic with it being a pen and pixel design. Pen and Pixel Graphics Incorporated was a Houston, Texas based graphic design firm that specialized in musical album covers. They are known especially for the covers that they did for Southern artists. They did stuff for Cash Money, No Limit Records, and countless other people. They have made some interesting designs throughout the years with 400 degrees being one of them. The company was owned by brothers Sean and Aaron Brunch. Sean would be interviewed about the 400 degrees cover and he would say, we had shot Juvie in the studio. That was the perfect shot for a cover. There were a couple of shots that we wanted to use. It doesn't have that dramatic perspective effect. We pushed that whole diamond effect and that whole in your face style with a very dominant color up front. Once the music got the momentum, people wanted to go out and get it. Then it was a recognizable cover and I think that's how the momentum picked up. Yeah, it's just such a great album. Obviously the album would have done well with the bad cover, it's brilliant, but the strength of the cover didn't hurt either. Now we'll get into the second half of the video where I'll break down the album track by track while also telling you the story behind the songs. The album 400 Degrees explores many different topics such as poverty, gun violence, and drug use. The album also provides grim street tales about murder, hustling, paranoia, loyalty, and the daily task of trying to stay alive in New Orleans. Despite this though, Juvenile finds a way to enjoy the fruits of his labor in the hood. On this album, you got songs like Flossing Season, which is about attracting women and flossing newly acquired material wealth. Then you have the cautionary tales of street life in the song Ghetto Children, you take a tour of the Magnolia Projects, where Juvenile was from, in the song Welcome to the Magnolia, and club anthems like Back That Thing Up. The album starts off with the intro, which pretty much does its job and sets up the album. It introduces Juvenile and 400 Degrees. The first actual song on the album would be Ha. About the song, Manny Fresh would say, Ha was the last song for 400 Degrees we added. I felt like we needed one more song that needed to be raw. It can't be something we thought about. He was like, I got something, but I really don't know if they ready. I was like, let me hear it. He started saying hi, and I programmed the beat real quick. I was like, dude, this is the song. This will be incredible. It was that scary moment as an artist when you feel like you might have gone too far. I was like, no, dude, I love everything that we've done on 400 Degrees, but we haven't done anything like this, and nobody's ever heard anything like this. Smart move made indeed, and just imagine if they didn't add that song to the album. Many Fresh touched on this topic, but the single was very risky for Juvenile, and in Juvenile's own words, he pretty much freestyled the single and said that the single is one of them songs that you have to listen to more than once to actually get it. Upon a second or third listen, you'll gain more understanding and then realize what Juvie is trying to say, and you get that aha moment when it finally clicks for you. In an interview, Juvenile would say, Ha was a spinoff of Soldier Rag, to be honest with you. If you listen to Ha, something in there relates to you. That's why in Ha, I'm speaking in second person. When that song hit the radio, it was over. Everybody was calling. 
Also, Universal wanted a song like Soldier Rag, and Juvenile said that he already had a song like Soldier Rag, and that ended up being hot. And he isn't lying though when he said that everybody was calling because this would lead to the last track, which is track 18 on the album, which is the High Remix with Jay Z. Now, to put it into perspective for you, Jay Z at this time musically was super hot, especially since in September of 1998, he dropped his third studio album, Volume 2 Hard Knock Life, and it had some bangers on there. But we all know the song Hard Knock Life took Jay Z to a whole other level. In an interview, Drew and I would say Jay-Z liked the record and just did the remix. I didn't ask him. I don't know how he got it. Maybe he just sampled the instrumentals or something. I don't know how he ended up doing his part, but he had sent it to us already. It came through Universal, so I guess they made some kind of contact with them and emailed it to us. That killed everything for me because I was excited like a kid on Christmas. Here it is, somebody that you look up to in the rap game on your song. I was blown away with that. Juvenile has said that Jay-Z coming out and doing this was great for his career. There's also another official remix of Ha with the Ha Boys as well. The video for Ha was also popular too, and it was shot in the Magnolia housing projects. Not bad for a song where Juvenile has said that he tried to sound like a drunk old man due to him recording the song drunk. This track would be followed up by Gon' Ride With Me, which is essentially a song about how his gun is with him everywhere he goes. Gon' Ride With Me then fades into Flossing Season, which is about attracting women and flossing newly acquired material wealth. Ghetto Children would be after this and the song is filled with cautionary tales about the street life. Follow Me Now would be the next track on the album and this is a track that really stands out to me. It's mainly due in part because of the sample the song contains. The song samples the song Oye Como Va by Tito Puente. Many Fresh really did his thing with this one I must say. The Cash Money concert skit would be next and this is basically a skit of Juvenile trying to get into a concert but the bouncer says it's 20 yen to get in which is the official currency of Japan. This leads to a very hilarious exchange between the two that fades into the song Welcome to the Magnolia. This is a song where Turk and Juvenile takes us through a tour of the Magnolia housing projects. They talk about how rough and tough it was coming up. UPT would be the next track and from my understanding UPT stands for the uptown part of New Orleans with it being referenced multiple times in the song. This is a posse cut with the Hot Boys and Birdman. It's a song that revolves around the violence in New Orleans. Run For It would be the next song up and the title is a play on the famous line Run For It run from the movie Forrest Gump. This song features Lil Wayne and they pretty much go back and forth about ducking and eluding the street violence in New Orleans. The high remix with the high boys would immediately follow this but we already covered that. After this we have probably my favorite track on the album and that's Rich Dudes. Everything about this track is out of this world. The beat is knocking everybody kills their part the hook is catchy i definitely feel like this could have been a single for sure and would have done well i'm not the only person who thinks this because juvenile has said that diddy told him that every single song on 400 degrees could have been a single juvenile was about to drop his album the g code which ended up dropping a year after 400 degrees and diddy was wondering why he was doing that when juvenile still could have put out more singles for 400 degrees Juvenile agrees with this and wanted to tap more in his songs like Ghetto Children, Welcome to the Magnolia, Run For It, and more. He wanted to do videos for them and everything, but all of this ended up not happening. Now it's time to get into the song that changed the career of Juvenile and Cash Money Forever, and that's Back That Thing Up. In the music video, when Juvenile said that Cash Money was taking over for the 9-9 in the 2000s, he wasn't playing, and this is a statement that remains true to this day. The song would peak at number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100. Here's what Minnie Fresh had to say about the song. The crazy thing was the song was probably a year and a half old. Juvenile was already Ray doing that song in clubs, but it didn't have that beat to it, so it didn't have the impact. It was more like a DJ backspinning and him saying his rhymes, but no music on top of it. I was like, dude, that song is so incredibly cool. You just gotta figure it out how you make it touch everybody. Many Fresh would further 
elaborate on this in the interview. He continued on and said, I figured, how do we get everything? If we put 808 drums under this with the bounce, we got the hood. We got to get white America too. How do we do that? I was like, if we put some classical music on there, not only are you going to get young kids, but white America too. I remember Sharon Stone commenting about back that thing up. Like, that's my favorite song. And I'm like, you got Sharon Stone backing that thing up? You arrived. Bro, I'm so dead about that last comment, man, about Sharon Stone. That is hilarious. But Manny Fresh wasn't lying, though. Doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, when that song comes on, people know what time it is. Manny Fresh will continue on by saying, I definitely smiled when I was making that record. I was like, this right here, this is the one. It's one of them songs that will go on for forever. If I went up against a whole gang of tough DJs, I would open my set up with Back That Thing Up. Like, it's over. Who want with me? Every producer dreams of a back that thing up. Not to discredit Ha, but Ha does not have that feel to it. I'm pretty sure I can't play Ha at a bar mitzvah and kids know it. They'll be like, I don't know that, but I know back that thing up. Juvenile also in an interview had this to say about the track. That was the icing on the cake. It's a song that I didn't think would make it big because it's bounce music. I have been doing bounce music for years and it just went regional. It never went mainstream. I didn't think that people in New York and LA, people that weren't from my area or are used to this kind of music would like it. It just blew up. I was shocked. I always thought how it was going to be the song to really blow me over, but it was back that thing up it was crazy. It's also crazy to think that Juvenile actually originally didn't want the song to be a single. Juvenile said that he wanted to be that street, hardcore, tough dude, but it just wasn't working out. His brother and close friends suggested that he should make songs for the ladies, but Juvenile wanted to showcase that he could rap too and show that part of him. In retrospect, Juvenile said that he was glad that he got forced into making that record, and I mean, I can see why, because everybody knows that song. It's funny that many fresh mentioned the bar mitzvah because I remember when I was at a bar mitzvah in middle school when I was like in seventh grade and I heard that the song Back That Thing Up came on and I was surprised looking at all the white kids and they all knew it like word for word. Like it was just crazy to me and years later I'm in college and the song comes on and the same thing occurs. As soon as you hear the opening to that song you definitely know what time it is and you better run to the dance floor because them girls is a product go crazy for sure for sure to give another quote of what juvenile said about the song he would say matter of fact i recorded back that thing up at high two days apart because those were the last songs i recorded before the 400 degrees album at the time we weren't doing too much drinking but we were smoking in the studio i got lit you gotta remember i'm from new orleans and we were in tennessee the weed quality was 20 times better in tennessee than new orleans so i had never smoked that way i have never experienced smoking dro or none of that until I got to Nashville. I've done plenty of videos breaking down albums and it really seems that the best and perhaps most popular songs on an album are made at the very end of its recording stage. For instance, I just made a video about Nellyville and the last two songs that were made for that album were Dilemma and Hot In Here. After Back That Thing Up, we had the song Off Top, which features Manny Fresh and Birdman. This then fades into the After Cash Money concert skit. This then leads us to the self-titled song 400 Degrees, and this has another crazy beat as well. The song Juvenile on Fire would follow after this, and the album would end up with the high remix with Jay-Z, which we already discussed. In closing, 400 Degrees has truly stood the test of time and is an undeniable classic. It's still highly praised and talked about till this day. Without this album and the success it garnered, we might not see the Cash Money Empire as we know it today. 400 Degrees really started to spark for them to go on a run that they're still on. Some of you may remember that I did this video a while back, but I definitely am looking into redoing a lot of my older videos. This is one video that I knew that I could have done better on, and that's why I remastered it and added way more to the story than I did last time. All in all, let me know what you thought of the video. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.